All right, so let's start by making some sounds. All right, so this is the first uh, of the subscreens, the sound screen. So <clears throat> uh, I really like the layout of uh, this editor. The, uh, the creator did a great job of documenting everything you see on the screen, both what you're looking at and what the buttons do. Uh, so check it out. So we have four columns. Now on the left, it's just the uh, what? It's just the uh, they're they're called steps. It's just the so when a sound is played, it starts at step zero, and it just scrolls down uh, until it gets to the end of the steps you've programmed in. And you can see in the bottom left corner of the screen, it says ST. Left column is steps. It's labeled ST for steps. This column I'm currently in, the first column you can edit, represents the uh, the instruments or the sounds or the musical notes. I'm sorry, the sounds you can play on channel one and channel two, as you can see at the bottom here. <clears throat> this next column is where I can create uh, sounds for the channel three the wave channel, as you can see at the bottom, wave channel 3. And then finally, the last one is the percussion channel, or the noise channel. You can create generate some white noise. All right, and uh, so underneath, uh, so at the bottom, they are the columns are labeled, uh, the steps, channel 1, 2 sounds, wave channel 3 sounds, and percussion four, uh, channel 4 sounds. Uh, underneath that is another row of information. So it says I'm currently in sound zero. So each song I make, so every, uh, what is it? Every time I load up a uh, Kirillin editor, I have the option to input 16 sounds, 16 sounds. I'm currently looking at sound zero. So sound zero through 15, 16 sounds total. Um, and, uh, each, it's, it sounds pretty limiting at first, only 16 instruments. Because you know, I'm used to MIDI where you have, what was it, 128 or 256, I can't remember, a lot more. But the, the reality is that's 16 sounds uh, for, each, uh, for each of these three channel types. Uh, and, and to further clarify, channel one and two can each play, they play the same types of sounds, which is why they're combined here. So down at the bottom of the screen here, uh, it says I'm on sound zero and I can hold the B button and scroll through different sounds by pressing up and down. All right, then they're all empty because I just loaded up the program. So sound zero. And as you can see, when I press the B button, pressing A and B is, uh, will never cause any change in the software. You always have to use, like, uh, press different separate keys together to actually change something. So if I hold B, it'll just give me a list of what I can do. So it says if I press B, and now the, the commands at the bottom change to say if I press up and down, I can change what sound I'm working on. And there's 16 total, as I mentioned. 9, 10, or A. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. F is 15, and then it cycles back down to 0. So up and down will cycle through the sounds. And if I hold B, I can also see left, right, if I press left, right arrow, I can change how the sound will pan. So by default, it's in the middle. If I press left, the sound will be played on the left speaker, you know, if you're wearing headphones on a Game Boy. And if I go back to the right, I can pan the sound to the right, which means the sound will play through the right speaker in the earphones. The default is in the middle. All right. <laughs> and at the, the bottom right, that information, this is really cool. It, t it tells you uh, what you're selecting, what you're uh, currently modifying, which is really handy because there's tons of stuff going on in the screen. We got R all note, level, oh my gosh, just there's so many columns to go through. And I can never remember what is what. I just look at the bottom right corner and it tells me. All right, so let's, uh, let's start making a sound. We're on sound one, or sound zero. Yep, we'll start at sound zero. And we'll make our first, our first sound. Um, I'm just going to start simple. I'm just going to use the uh, the sound that's in the tutorial. 
So the first thing here, so I'm going to hold the A button. Let's see what my options are. I can use up and down to edit. Left and right to change the L position and B to delete. All right, so this is cool. And so, so at the bottom right corner, let's see, let me press up. All right, so this is input. This is what you'll see a lot. This is a C3001. So this is the beginning of a sound. All right, I just entered some info. Now, all I did here, let me undo this. Uh, uh, so I just held A, and it says up, down, up, press up or down to edit in the bottom left corner. So I'm going to press up, and it now says C3001. Now what is C3? In the bottom right corner, it says RL note. So this is a little reminder to me that what I'm currently hiding, C3, is the relative note. So for any sound you make in this editor, um, it'll always say C3. C3 is the note you tell it to play, it's relatively speaking. Oh, wow. It was really cool. It's, it's really, it makes a lot of sense, but now that I'm trying to say it, put it into words, it's hard to explain. So later on, when I'm actually typing in my, 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 my song, if I tell it to play the key F, it's going to play an F. Um, this note will be the F. If I, for the next uh, part of my sound here, well, you know what? Let's just keep typing in. Let's just keep typing stuff in. So I'm going to start over. If I hold the A button, um, you can see in the bottom right corner, it says uh, while I'm holding the A button, my option, one of my options is to press B to DL, delete, to delete the entry I'm currently highlighting. Uh, generally in this editor, uh, pressing A and B at the same time will delete. It'll delete sounds, it'll delete uh, whatever you're highlighting. That's the delete uh, function. So I'm going to start over again by pressing A and B together. All right, and let's start typing in, uh, start typing in a sound. So I'm going to hold A and press up to edit. Now let's see here. This is C3001. So this is the relative note Let's just try playing this. So at any time in Corellon Editor, you can press Start to listen to what you're working on. So I'm going to press Start. And there is no output. <laughs> this is the next thing that really confused me. All right, so why was there no out sound output? So it is playing a relative C0. So it's trying to play a note. So I'm going to move to the right. So there's three columns that are in this, uh, this first section of sound this channel one two sound editor and the first column if I look at the bottom right it is the level this is the volume level of this specific step in the sound I'm working on and it says the level by default is set to zero so it's muted <laughs> thanks <laughs> all right well I want to edit it which means I'm gonna press the A button A button to edit stuff all right I'm gonna hold it down and it says I can press up and down to change stuff uh, yeah and then uh, right on the far right, it says I can press B to delete it. We already talked about that. All right, so I'm just going to start editing it. All right, so let's put it up. Uh, oh, and this cycles through uh, 16, 16 values once again. Well, I've, most of the stuff in this editor is values between 0 and F, 0 and 15, so 16 steps. So let's just crank it all the way up. Uh, all right, and press start. It is technically playing sound. Let's find out why it sounds so crappy. So now that we've adjusted the volume to max volume for this step in this sound, I'm going to go to the right. And it says PWD. That is the wave duty, the pulse wave duty. This is the sound of the, of the, I'm sorry, I'm using the word sound too much. This is the tone. This is the pulse wave. The, how, how it's going to sound. This is the e versus the oo <laughs> sort of thing. And, there's a, and it says right there, it says there's, it could be, it have an option between 0 and 3. So I'm going to hold A, and I can change between them 0, 1, 2, 3, and then it cycles back to 0, just like the documentation in the bottom right corner says. Uh, so this has a few different sounds, and we'll play with that more later. 0 is a valid sound, so we're just going to leave it. And the final one is the time, the length that the note is playing. As you can see, 
Uh, it is currently set to 1. The only thing less than 1 is 0, which is don't play it at all. And so uh, it's playing it for one frame, which is incredibly short, which is why we can barely hear it. So I'm going to crank that up to F, the longest. And let's see what it sounds like now. Cool, there it is. And I think there's one more step above that, which is zero, which sounds a little counterintuitive, but zero just means uh, it's above F in this case. It means just play it, keep playing a long, long time. And eventually it does stop. There you go. So if you want an extended note that lasts the whole, the whole time of the, just you keep playing until I tell you to stop, it's pretty much zero. But I'm gonna go back down, F, E, okay, so, and just to confirm, so F was this long, all right, and we can put it down to half that, uh, eight. Yep, that's shorter, four, and then back down to one where it was, super short. All right, <clears throat> and we can play around with, uh, we'll go back to the center column here, the pulse wave sound. So there's zero. And one is a little bit, I call it, I say it's a little softer. And then two is softer still. And three is actually useless. Three is the same as one. So I don't use three. <laughs> There's no need to. All right. And then this one was the level, the volume. So if we lower this. It just gets quieter. All right, we're going to keep it up here. All right, and so that's it. I mean, we made a sound. We could go on from here. Uh, but yeah, this is... Uh, let's keep uh, checking this out. So the tutorial has us do another one. Let's type this in. One, two. So this is saying, and the tutorial says we'll do a one. F2, 1. So this is saying play one note. Oops. Oh, I didn't talk about this column yet. So let's just play, let's just play this and see what this sounds like. Um, so this is saying play a relative C3, so just the note, and play it at max volume. Uh, the softest, what I call the softest uh, pulse wave sound, and play it for a uh, very short, the shortest it can be, without being off. And then the second note here is play the same note again. It's a little bit quieter, a uh, slightly different sound, a little harsher sound, and for a slightly longer. And that sounds like this. All right, now the tutorial uh, says, and this is the tutorial that comes with the program, the HTML file that to make this a C4, so I'm gonna hold the A button, and as you can see down at the bottom, press up and down to edit. All right, so I'm gonna start scrolling through different notes. So this was set by default to C3, and this is a relative C3. If I change this to a D, and uh, when I actually, this is not literally a D, the key, uh, a D key. Instead, it's a relative D, which means when I go to actually play this this uh, tone, this sound in my music, if I tell it to play a G, a G key, um, it'll play an A, and then it'll play the G, because this it play, this, uh, this isn't the, a D. This is a relative D. This is two steps above whatever key it's going to play. So if I'm over, I'm writing my music, and I say I'll play a G with this with this sound. The way it is right now, it, this D is going to be interpreted as an A, and then the next step, it'll play the G. Does that make sense? These aren't actual D and C keys. These are relative to what you actually play. Eh, we'll talk about it more later. All right, so this, how does this sound? Too short. So just to play around, let's make this a little longer. It'll make this one a lot longer. And you can see if we make this even longer. And the tutorial actually has us do a, where is it, a C4. So this represents an entire octave. 
an entire octave higher than the key will that will actually be playing. <laughs> Beep boop. Alright, now why does the tutorial have us do this? Why does it have us play a one key higher than what we want and then play the key we actually want? And this is to give it some punch. Let's test it out. So let's put this back to what they actually say to do. So if I uh, if I actually disable this by saying play this for zero steps. Oh wait, I screwed it up. <laughs> Just playing the sound. Oh wait. Oh, okay. We'll leave this at two. So if I want to disable it, I'll make it zero volume. There we go. So this is the sound by itself. This is just this one. This is just playing a relative C3. If I add this uh, extra little start here, it kind of adds a blip in the beginning that gives a nice solid start to the note. And we can test that more later. Let's continue filling out this uh, tutorial numbers. They're this tu the numbers from the tutorial. So let's see here. One. So it goes all the way down to C. So I'm just going to fill these in real quick. OK. And they're all going to be C3s for the rest of the sound. All right. And it says this is going to be decreasing. So F, E, C. Oh, I should have cycled from the other direction to make it faster. A. I can see what's happening here. It's just so this, uh, this column is level or volume. So it starts at full volume, F, and it's just slowly decreasing with each step. So when I play a sound, it's going to start at the top, and it'll go down step by step until uh, it gets to the bottom, and then it ends. Four, three, two, one, one. And so by this point, <laughs> volume level one is going to be super quiet. So it's just kind of fading out. So I can tell it starts at full volume, hits the note, and then it fades out. OK? And uh, let's see here. Let's do the time next. I can see in the bottom right corner, this is the time column. It can rate the values can be from one to F. That can actually be also be zero. Oh, it didn't say that. That tripped, that tripped me up at first. Okay, so it starts super fast at one one frame, then plays two frames, and then it goes three three. Okay, plays a bunch of three frame notes. Now, why is it getting longer? Why is each step in this sound getting longer? Seven to the four. That's because the way this note is going to sound, it's going to start fast, -na 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 -na, and then fade out. As it fades out, it gets it kind of slows down in its uh, its sound. Five, six, 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 and six. That's everything from that column. And then this column. Now this was the pulse wave uh, sound column. So the different how the sound will. Well, uh, this affects uh, the tone of the sound. The tone? How it, the harshness of the sound. And this just has it alternate between, oh, two, one, zero. Oh, all three sounds. One, two, one, zero. One, two, one, zero, one, zero. Look at that. All right, let's play it. So it sounds just like we were expecting. It starts loud and fades out. Uh, over here, it uh, as the note as the sound plays, the variations in the sound get longer and longer because each uh, step takes more and more takes more and more uh, frames to play. You know, so up here it's only uh, three frames for for the uh, step. Down by down here it's uh, six frames. <laughs> And 
And uh, here in the middle column, it's uh, alternating between the different sounds, which gives it a, what's it called? An, an envelope? I'm still learning these, uh, these terms. An, an envelope modulation? I don't know. It gives it a sound. <laughs> All right, and so I'm pressing start button to play it. Uh, start button is always used to play whatever you're working on. Now I'm gonna hold the up arrow and tap the start button. And that'll change the default octave. I can just press start now. It changes the default octave that the sound is being played on uh, to be higher. And I can hold the up arrow and press start again. And this just lets me see what the sound is gonna sound like in different octaves. Let's see if I like it. Oh, it gets really high. All right, I'm gonna put it back down. I'm gonna hold down and press start. Can I use this as a bass sound? Oh, nice. <laughs> All right, and this is the default. I'll leave it up here, that sounds nice. All right, now let's play around a little more. So there is, uh, I can't remember. Oh, here we go, if I hold the A button. So we did up and down to edit. I'm looking at the bottom of the screen. My options when holding A is I can press up and down to edit the sound. I can, on the right, it says I can press B to delete it. Okay, we did that. And in the middle, it says uh, L position. That's the loop position. So I'm gonna press right. Boop. And this is where I can tell the sound to loop. And at this point, it's saying, go back up to step zero and loop it. And this will loop uh, infinitely. I'm gonna press start. And it's looping. What if I tell it to loop? I'm gonna hold B again. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Oh, okay, so I already told it to loop. So I'm gonna hold the A button to, ah, hold on. How do I do this? Ah! Left, right to set the loop position. Oh, hold A and press left and right. Oh, okay. If I let go of A and do it again. Oh yeah, okay. So it's always hold A and always press left and right to adjust the loop position. All right, and I can tell it to loop uh, instead of going all the way back up the top, let's just loop back to B. Just the, the final section here. There it is, I can hear it looping at the tail end. And to, to stop it from playing, I'm just holding the B button and going up to sound one and back to sound zero. Ah, this is one thing that confuses me about this editor. There must be a better way to stop a sound from playing, but whatever. All right. I'm gonna delete this by holding A and pressing B at the same time, boop, to delete it. And there's my sound. Cool. All right, so now that we have a sound, let's go make some tunes. So I'm gonna press select, go back to the main menu. All right, we just got done working on sounds. And actually, can, you can toggle back and forth by pressing select, go back and forth between the sound sc editor screen and the main menu. And when you do jump to the main menu, this is very convenient, it will set, it'll jump us back to the section of the main menu for sounds. And there's nothing fancy going on here. If I scroll up, this is the same main menu as you see when you start the, uh, you start up the, uh, the editor. But by default, since I was working on sounds, it jumps me back to the sound commands, which is really nice. And you have the option to copy and paste. That's it. And it's, I didn't see this specified, but when you do copy, when you do copy a sound, um, I was worried, <laughs> I was worried that it would copy like all three channels. Oh, like, anyway, the point is it, it does exactly what I expected. My expected behavior is when you copy a sound and then you paste it using copy from buffer, um, it does, uh, it does copy only the channel you're currently highlighting. And here, we'll demonstrate it. So I'll press select to go to the main menu. I'm gonna copy to buffer by pressing start. Boop, sound copied. I'm gonna go back by pressing select. All right, and I'm gonna change to a different sound by holding the B button and pressing up. All right, so I was editing sound zero, and now I'm gonna press up, and now I'm editing sound one. All right, and I go back to the main menu by pressing select, and copy from buffer, or paste. All right, the sounds have been copied. And then I press select to go back. And now you can see sound one looks exactly like sound zero. And I'm gonna to toggle between the two by holding the B button and pressing down 
up, down, up. Yep, they're the same. And they sound the same. Here's sound zero. Here's sound one. Yep. Just for kicks, let's try getting rid of this. Uh, I'm going to hold the A button and modify this. Let's make these all zero just to see what they sound like. I'm still getting used to this uh, modulation technique. And what's this sound like now? It just sounds like fading out, which makes sense because uh, we've got the volume. It just decreases over time. And up here we've got the, uh, this wouldn't really, this doesn't really do very much. These are kind of superfluous at this point, but whatever. Well, that's kind of nice. And then the original sound. That's kind of cool. Well, we got lots of space for sound, so I'll just leave this here just for fun. All right, sound zero. I'm going to press select, go back to the main menu. Uh, instead of pressing up and down, I'm going to press left to jump back up to the top. And I'm going to, now that we've made a sound, I'm going to start using that sound to make a block. 